Hi guys, I'm Dan Kamish and I have been challenged to beat Matt Neal's pole position lap for Moulton Park in 2017. Me and Matt are here today to give you a talk through Moulton Park, one of the best circuits for British Touring Cars visits. Uh, we're going to have a bit of fun and see the differences between my lap on the simulator and Matt's lap in real life. And let's see who comes out on top. Right then guys, there we go. Not quite the perfect lap, but still just enough to knock Matt off the top spot back in 2017. Top gear style slap, there we go. So yeah, coming over the uh, start finish line, important to get a good run out of Deer's Leap in the final corner uh, here at Oldham, because it is uphill as we start the lap. Um, it's quite a qu quick entry to turn one. Um, all I'm trying to do really is keep up the minimum speed as much as possible and I'm, I'm trying to rotate the car just at that moment that it hits the dip. Um, there is a little bit of camber in the corner and if you can hit it at the right angle at the right speed, it gives you a really great exit. Um, you've got to watch it here because you get on Palmer's grass and, uh, and you're going to get done for track limits. Um, but there is a little bit of time to be gained at this corner if you can really hit that dip just right. That's right Dan, there's a lot of time. Exit speed's paramount in uh, out of old hall turn one. And then you've got the big long run down to Cascades, goes over a crest in sixth gear. So uh, entering Cascades, the, the, the track goes into compression, massive amount of compression, which finds you a lot of grip. It's one of the few corners on the on the track where we use the, the right rear tyre. So you've got to be, be mindful of the rear might step out from a cold tyre going into there. But as I say, the, um, the, the track goes into compression so you can carry an awful lot of apex speed. And again, you're going to be back up to sixth gear afterwards, so exit speed is going to be paramount. Yeah, agreed. It's a, it's a funny corner cascade. I find if you don't turn in early enough, you never quite make the corner at all. You can easily run out of road there on the exit. Yeah, and then you've got the run down to the hairpin. We've got, uh, you know when you're out to break for the hairpin because there's two tiny little crests, which is mm. it's hard to see on, on, the, um, on the digital version, but... Uh, and what those crests do, they just unweight the car, so you can. It's very easy to lock a brake into the heavy braking zone, down four gears to second gear for the hairpin. Agreed. There's quite a few different lines into the hairpin as well. I mean, I've always, I've always moved over to the left and driven the more conventional line, but I do see quite a few people, uh, especially in the Porsches, um, who actually brake on the right hand side of the track and then come back to the left, um, trying to avoid the bumps. There, not something I've ever done, but uh, I know it definitely happens. Race situation, it's a, it's, a, it's a corner of the hairpin where you've got to be really mindful of looking forward but also looking backwards because you, you know, the guys are going to dive bomb you there from any possible uh, chink in your armour. So they're going to be coming from two, three, three places back, especially the, the first couple of laps are a real danger zone going into this part of the circuit. Yeah, agreed. And the exit there is so important as well because it's uphill on the exit. Um, I think yourself, like me, and I think almost all of the drivers, we always come to the right as well on the way out of the of the hairpin, on the way up the hill. Uh, I presume it's just the least amount of resistance um, and also puts the guy behind off a little bit if he's thinking of having to go into, uh, into the chicane. 
the hill coming out of the hairpin is quite steep and you, you know, you're, you're under heavy acceleration, especially if you're, at the, you're carrying success ballast. Mm, agreed. The entry, entry to the chicane is a good one. It's, uh, it's, it's a very late braking zone. I know if you actually stand and watch, uh, there's a good vantage point there across the way on the hill to watch. It's amazing how late the touring cars can brake there. Um, but you just got to take quite a lot of curb on the entry. Um, I always quite enjoy driving in there at speed. Um, and then it's just a matter of gathering it up something in the middle and getting the exit. Yeah, I mean, going into the uh, the S's, it's one you can afford to be, and drivers do afford to be a little bit brave because there's, there's a nice escape road using the old circuit into the, to the Nickerbrook. Yeah, uh, but you, you could probably take the, the first part of it in third, but I always use second gear just to try and help slow the car up a wee bit. Mm -hmm. But then you're snatching third straight away for the left-hander and then short shifting to fourth for the right-hander, using as much curb as you can. With, we're losing our banging our wing mirrors through each tire stack as we go through this section. Yeah, agreed. My, um, I think my tendency driving style is always to go down the extra gear as well, get it stopped, get it rotated, and then um, and then go for the throttle. Actually, on the sim, you can see there that I actually use third gear. Um, obviously, the sim being not not geared quite how our race car would be, um, but still carrying a lot of entry speed and um, yeah, doing not a bad job with it. And then when you exit uh, the final part of Nickerbrook, or the last last one, um, up Clay Hill, it's one of the four points on the circuit where we're going to be at maximum revs in sixth gear. So exit speed again is absolutely paramount. There's a big serrated curb on the on the exit curb on the left hand side, exiting Nickerbrook. And if you sneak a wheel onto there, it's going to cost you time going up the hill. So again, it's a long drag up the hill all the way around to Druids. Over the crest of Clay Hill, it's one of the it's one of the most scary corners I feel in the country of, of any circuit because it's completely blind as you from a driver's eye view, and um, the car is completely unweighted. So you've got to know where you're going and where you're going to place the car exactly. You've got to be inch perfect through there because you're not hanging about. Your sixth gear is sort of 130 mile an hour, so mm. the slightest uh, slightest little bit you're going to be out. But then you're going to be banging on the rev limiter in sixth gear as you just hit the brakes, ready for druids. Yeah. How many laps does it take you to build up to that being flat? I know I it takes two times in a slower car. <laughs> <laughs> I know it takes. Uh, I know it takes me quite a few on a on a Saturday morning practice to um, to get that to get the left kink flat out. Because as you say, it's it's a very fast part of the circuit, and um, as you know from last year, I think when um, you unfortunately lost that wheel, there's there's no way of going off the druids without hitting something. Yeah, Druid is, is a very tricky, it's a double apex uh, corner. Again, a lot of it, it blind from the way, the way you go in and it's under the trees. So it's, you know, if it's been damp or it's early in the morning practice, you know, it, it is notorious with drivers um, who've, who've driven there that it's kind of have less grip, you know, be a bit greasy under there from the, the sap from the trees. And um, yeah, you carry a lot of speed in the wet, it's fourth gear, in the dry, it's fifth gear, but it's again, mm -hmm. The straight afterwards on the run down to lodge will be maximum revs in sixth gear. So again, I sound like a broken record, but exit speed is absolutely paramount. Yeah, that, yeah. It, the entry to Druids is, is really quick. As you say, fifth gear, um, it just takes so much belief, I find, because you get to a point where you just gotta, you just gotta trust in the car, trust in the grip, get your foot off the brake, and, and you just gotta throw it in and hope it sticks really. Um, and that's the key there, just having that belief that the car's been set up well, you know, you're in the groove um, and it's going to slingshot you around. Um, yeah, great corner, Drew. It's one of the, one of the best right. of anyone we go to. It's, it is a strange corner because you go into compression in the middle of it, don't you, Dan? Yeah, and then you do. there's an apex, um, there's a crest just after the second apex. So you've got to get your car lined up and ready be ready for it because the car will unweight dramatically on the exit. So if you're, yeah. you're not exactly, your position isn't exactly right, you will be off over the uh, the exit curve, which can get uh, pretty exciting. It, it does feel great there though, because it's such, it's such a high speed corner that on the exit, as you say, as it, as it does go light over the crest, you know, you're so in tune with the with the RPM and the noise, you know when you're on a fast lap, because it's just that little bit higher in the RPM as it, as it goes light and you're like, yeah, keep your foot in, this is the one. Then obviously we got the run down to uh, the final corner lodge. Big, big braking zone. Good overtaking opportunity, as I've found out and not found out. It's my peril in years gone by. But it's it's the last of the late breakers, the last corner on the lap. You know, it's where it can all kick off and you can be a hero or a zero again, which I've been both on, on occasion. But again, picking your braking point is 
uh, paramount here. So we, we run adjusters in the car where we can adjust it from front to rear brake dr dramatically corner to corner. This is one corner where I will run a lot more rear brake just to try and back the car in a wee bit, get it half pointed through the apex. So I just to try and help me through third gear before you, so you can see the exit of the corner. Yeah, you say it's, it's a, a last of the late breakers kind of corner. And it's, I always try and pick up the, just the very back end of the, uh, of the inside curb there. I think you can actually see on the sim, it's modeled very accurately. And uh, you can see that I get all the way over to the right, try and run my wheels right around the curb um, to give myself the best possible exit. Yeah, and then we've obviously just got the final run to the flag. It's a uh, big dip over Deer's Leap. Um, yeah. You know, races can be won and lost here, and it's a great overtaking opportunity. So if people defend into launch, then you can take a, a big sweep on them and try and get up their inside. So it's uh, it's definitely where uh, action's going to happen and the, and the crowds like to watch as well. It is. I mean, the, the, the one the one thing about Alton Park, I'd say, in terms of the race, the racecraft-wise, is it's it's quite an easy circuit to defend, would you say? I mean, it's, it's very one line, isn't it? It's um, if, if you know how to position the car right, it can be very difficult to get past. Yeah, you could say that about any any of the British circuits. A lot of the British circuits are tight and twisty, and you know, Al Alton is you know it's been called the mini, referred to as the mini Nurburgring. You know, it's it's the UK's answer to that, but it's it's very fast, it's very flowing, it's got some big braking zones, and big braking zones followed by high speed straights offer overtaking opportunities. So, mm. you know, to get past a driver who's savvy, it's tough. Um, but I think you could say that at a lot of circuits around. Yeah, agreed. Um, yeah, one thing to know, I mean, the 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 lap from the sim is, is I find it's incredibly close actually to the uh, to the real life lap. Um, yes, we know the gearing isn't quite exactly the same. It's never going to be. Uh, obviously, the setup isn't isn't our setup. It's, it hasn't been through the hands of Tom or Barry, but it's um, it's amazing how how close it is and. Um, you know, I think that's why they're so so popular right now. You know, for the drivers because they can really hone you, um, hone the skills. Um, it's a good way of getting back to the track without ever leaving your home, which obviously has been great these last few weeks. Um, what are your thoughts on it, Matt? Ah, uh, yeah, well, you're more into it. You're younger than me. I I struggle with the Sims a bit more. They are fantastic and they are getting very very realistic. For me, I miss the amount of gradient changes. Uh, on a circuit like Alton Park, when you're going over those crests at 100 mile an hour plus, it's like being on a roller coaster ride. Your, your tummy does go through your mouth, and you know when you drop down into cascades, and you don't get that feeling on a sim, which to me is part of the driving experience, and the sort of the fear that you, you're going to hurt yourself dramatically going through some of the turns like Druids, which really do get your attention. But realism-wise, it's you know they're they're getting very very close now. Yeah, no doubt. I, I agree, and, and I agree with everything you've just said there. Especially on the, um, you know, the, the, the danger factor, uh, of course, is the main thing. You know, in real life, you can't just press reset every time you make a mistake. You can't practice until you're blue in the face um, and perfect it to an inch of its life. You know, at some point, you just got to get on with it. But on the sim, you can just reset, reset. I actually wore my thumb out at, at your place at Dynamics a few months ago because I pressed reset on the steering wheel that many times because all I wanted to do was do the, the perfect lap um, which of course just isn't realistic but still fun nonetheless. You just make sure you get all the resets out your system mate so when we get back there you're fully programmed. <laughs> Got your boss. <laughs>